Welcome to Periodontics Week 1, Part 3, Lecture, Chapters 1 through 4. Alveolo-gingival fibers extend from the periosteum of the alveolar crest into the gingival connective tissue. See Figure 2-14. These fiber bundles attach the gingiva to the bone. The periosteum is a dense membrane composed of fibrous connective tissue that closely wraps the outer surface of the alveolar bone. Circular fibers encircle the tooth in a ring-like manner coronal to the alveolar crest and are not attached to the cementum of the tooth. See figures 2-14 and 2-15. These fiber bundles connect adjacent teeth to one another. Dentogingival fibers are embedded in the cementum near the cementoenamel junction and fan out into the gingival connective tissues. These fibers act to attach the gingiva to the teeth. Periosteogingival fibers extend laterally from the periosteum of the alveolar bone. These fibers attach the gingiva to the bone. Intergingival fibers extend in a mesiodistal direction along the entire dental arch and around the last molars in the arch. These fiber bundles link adjacent teeth into a dental arch unit. Intercircular fibers encircle several teeth. These fiber groups link adjacent teeth into a dental arch unit. Interpapillary fibers are located in the papilla coronal to the transeptal fiber bundles. These fiber groups connect the oral and vestibular interdental papillae of posterior teeth. Transgingival fibers extend from the cementum near the CEJ and run horizontally between adjacent teeth. These fiber bundles link adjacent teeth into a dental arch unit. Transeptal fibers pass from the cementum of one tooth over the crest of alveolar bone to the cementum of the adjacent tooth. These fiber bundles connect adjacent teeth to one another and secure alignment of teeth in the arch. PDL fibers of the gingival connective tissue. The periodontal ligament is a thin sheet of fibrous connective tissue that surrounds the roots of the teeth and joins the root cementum with the socket wall. The thickness of the periodontal ligament ranges from 0.05 to 0.25 millimeters depending on the age of the patient and the function of the tooth. The ends of the periodontal ligament fibers that are embedded in the cementum and the alveolar bone are known as Sharpie's fibers. The periodontal ligament consists of connective tissue fibers, cells, and extracellular matrix. The cells of the periodontal ligament are mainly fibroblasts with some cementoblasts and osteoblasts. The extracellular matrix of the periodontal ligament is similar to the extracellular matrix of other connective tissue. The fiber bundles of the periodontal ligament are a specialized connective tissue that surrounds the root of the tooth and connects it with the alveolar bone. These fibers are the largest component of the PDL. Blood vessels and nerves are also found in the periodontal ligament space. The periodontal ligament has a rich supply of nerves and blood vessels. The functions of the periodontal ligament are supportive, sensory, nutritive, formative, and resorptive. The supportive function is the major function of the PDL, which is to anchor the tooth to its bony socket. The sensory function is carried out by nerve fibers that transmit tactile pressure and pain. 
The nutritive function is carried out by blood vessels that provide nutrients to the cementum and bone. The formative function is carried out by cementoblasts, which are cementum builders, and osteoblasts, which are bone builders. The resorptive function is carried out by osteoclasts that can produce rapid bone resorption and sometimes resorption of cementum. The PDL of single rooted teeth contain four primary fiber bundles. Multi rooted teeth have five. The alveolar crest fiber group extends from the cervical cementum running downward in a diagonal direction to the alveolar crest. This fiber group resists horizontal movements of the tooth. The horizontal fiber group is located apical to the alveolar crest fibers. They extend from the cementum to the bone at right angles to the long axis of the root. This fiber group resists horizontal pressure against the crown of the tooth. The oblique fiber group is located apical to the horizontal group. They extend from the cementum to the bone running in a diagonal direction. This fiber group resists vertical pressure that threatens to drive the root into its socket. The apical fiber group extends from the apex of the tooth to the bone. This fiber group secures the tooth in its socket and resists forces that might lift the tooth out of the socket. The interradicular fiber group is present only in multi-rooted teeth and extends from the cementum in the furcation area of the tooth to the interradicular septum of the alveolar bone. These fiber groups help stabilize the tooth in its socket. See figure 2.17 on page 37 for more information. The attachment apparatus is what connects the PDL to the gingiva. It is composed of epithelial cells of the junctional epithelium attached to the tooth surface using hemidesmosomes and connective tissue fibers inserted into the root surface. In health, it is located at the same level as the CEJ. In disease, it is apical to the CEJ. A thin layer of cementum covers the dentin of the root. The periodontal ligament holds the tooth in the bony socket of the alveolar bone. Cementum is the calcified layer of connective tissue that covers the root of the tooth. Its function is to cover and seal the dentinal tubules, attach periodontal ligament fibers to the tooth, and it compensates for attrition over time. There are two types of cementum, acellular and cellular. The cemento enamel junction, or CEJ, is the location where the enamel and cementum meet or join. In 60% of cases, cementum overlaps enamel. In 30% of cases, it meets with the enamel. And in 10% of cases, there is a gap of unprotected dentin between the enamel and the cementum. The alveolar bone is mineralized connective tissue, which is created by osteoblasts. It is rigid contains blood vessels and nerve endings, and is constantly reshaping via resorption and redeposition. The components of the alveolar bone are extracellular matrix, blood vessels, lymph vessels, nerves, and it has a mineralized portion and contains osteoblasts and osteoclasts. In the figure above, it shows number one, the alveolar bone proper, number two, trabecular bone, and number three, the compact bone. This concludes the lectures for week one, chapter one through four, 
part three.